Hello everyone and welcome back to Fate Tactics. In this episode we'll be taking on the last challenge on the map and I wonder what this one has in store. Well, well it's on the Ashen Plains so I'm thinking a lot of fire type units which is actually good because then we'll go with Paya and Claudia. Both great units, especially Paya after the transformation he's a powerhouse so yeah, I've been wanting to use him in one of those fights. Nice, we've actually completed the whole board, so we'll go for a sweet bonus. Oh, and another one we can use. Um, let me think. Mm, yeah, let's use this one. Nice, nice, that's a nice mana barrier bonus. And let's see how this challenge looks. Um, if you noticed correctly, um, the type of gems that you get after the challenge are exactly the same gems that the guests in present in the battle use. Well, it makes sense because after the battle they do say they give you the voucher for the gems, so I guess they will have a voucher for the gems they use. It's quite logical. And, like we thought, it's filled with fire type units. And a fire type succubus. Stats on her aren't that great. So this looks kind of suspicious. And of course she has the dual power. Okay, she chains. This will be... I think that this will be quite infuriating. But yeah, that I think that's a common skill for the succubus and for the vampire, that chain. So it makes sense. And it attack, and it has an area attack. Uh, okay. And cast volcanic ash. So I'm guessing it's one of those target 5 squares around the unit spells. Uh, so this this guy. Didn't we have a quarrel with him in Blackpool City? At least Claudia had. Um, piercing dance. Oh, he's a backstabber. So that's cool. Passing blade. Okay. Exploit. Nice. Silver tongue. They look uh, quite capable. Also, like I said, I think I'll be going with a predominantly water type um, team for this one. Which is quite good because if you remember we got those elementals from the crystals and we had some nice spells from them so we can actually utilize those spells. Um, okay, let me let me actually change this up because um, I don't know if having blink on Paya will make him lose the attack bonus that he gets when he jumps those squares. So I think I will give it actually to Claudia because I don't want to use that bonus. It's actually quite quite good. And Grace of Nixie, this is the spell I was talking about. It's part of the elemental buffing family of spells, which are great, especially if you can field a, a predominantly elemental team uh, that corresponds to the uh, spells element. And we can do that in this fight, because we will have the elemental advantage. And we have enough units to fit in here. So yeah, I think I'll be going with this setup. I hope this won't be as long as the previous fight was. Okay, and of course. We need to get moving. Uh, so the guests won't get their asses handled on the plate. Mm, the dragon mod is there, but... Um, we should make short work out of her. But I want her to move first. Because I don't want to sit still and attack, and I also don't want to get out of my way to go there and attack her. So I want her to move first, and then I'll see if I can move in a direction I want, towards the guests, and then attack her. Um, yeah. Oh, crap, I kind of forgot the witch does that. Okay. Um, I think Paya should be able to jump there. Yeah. 
Nice one. Okay, this was quite a good first round. Those amounts there shouldn't be a threat, so I can leave those B and move. Okay, she corners. Need to make haste, so guests won't actually die. Good thing I have a lot of fast moving units uh, that can cross uh, our terrain like Paya and Claudia and the Witch. So this should make it faster. We will wait for the bones to be peony. And I'm not even counting Grumble Bunny because before he gets there, uh, I think the fight will end actually. Okay. And now with Peony. Suppose I could have used Cloak and Pyre to give him that ambush bonus. Oh, but. Okay, nice. Wonder what that does actually. I need to heal up the scum over there. He is about well, nearly 300 HP down. And I'm still not there, so... Yeah. Let's get moving. I just wanted to check something. How far he is from the proc. I do have that heal all spell. I think I will use it. Because he is quite damaged. Not much, but it always helps, and Paya should be there in the next turn. Okay. Peony is quite close also. Leave the grumble bunny here. I will try to move him out of harm's way, but if he can do it, well, sucks. Now, I think we actually will begin to attack the boss ourselves. Nice thinking. Okay. We'll go for exploit. Nice. That will give me a quick the next turn. Okay, so this will suck actually. But I guess um, I guess we can't do anything about it. And now we have the buff ready, so let's use it. Those are really powerful buffs because they buff your max HP and mana bar and give some attack bonus. So yeah, they're kind of like three spells in one. And this is quite powerful and on a quite low cooldown, it's only like four turns. So it's a, it's a nice thing to um, build your team in such a way that you can utilize it. But well, it also depends on what type of units are on the field, I guess. Because I don't want to field a mono element team to utilize those spells if we, we will be on a, in an... I, I don't know why I can't say anything properly today, but yeah. Um, I was going to say that we shouldn't field a mono element team if we, we will be at a disadvantage um, towards the enemies on the field. We could field a team a mono element team that utilizes the spell, but it won't be at a disadvantage, nor it would, would be on an advantage, so it would be kind of neutral, and we could utilize that spell still. So, well, that's an idea. 
but it depends on how um, how are the future encounters uh, actually fought out, and if there won't be a lot of mixed elemental unit types. And that could prove um, difficult when utilizing those spells, but yeah, we'll see. These are not make or break spells, so we don't have to get out of our way to use them. But uh, having them is always a good option. Okay, back to the task at hand. So the Grumble Bunny is in a tight spot. Maybe I will actually move Peony a little bit back and help him. Also, yeah, here comes the dual power into action. And this was nasty. Um. Okay, I think I need to get my bearings straight because uh, what actually happened? Um, did this bounce more than once uh, from every from my every unit? Or well, I'm not so sure what happened now. <laughs> I think it actually bounced once and uh, towards everyone with that chain ability, but she does have an AoE attack and it dropped after hitting everyone, so it kinda hit again in some uh, cases. But it did look like it hit everyone a couple of times, so I'm confused now. <laughs> I'm confused right now, to be honest. But it looked crazy. Yeah, I'm not protecting the guests right now. Ooh. And like I said, I'm going to help the Grumble Bunny because he is on a tight spot. And I don't want Peony standing there because as you saw that, it was kind of bonkers. We will leave the water element you know, because they're actually resistant towards the succubus attacks. So it won't do that much damage to them, but Peony... Uh, Peony's not in a good spot there. Okay, we we'll go to the high ground and let's attack the Dragonling. going down slowly. I guess it's just hectic with all that bouncing and it sort of looks like it hits multiple units multiple times, so yeah. I guess that's a little bit misleading if you see it the first time like I did. Kind of funny though. Hmm. It'd be a nice thing to have Claudia's Ultra up for now. We would need an AoE cleanse and heal. I guess we're quite near. That dual power was kinda. Hmm. Kinda not. Kinda unfortunate for us, but yeah. No, I will take care of that Unilana here. Onilana. I hope one of the guests with the Anchor ability finishes... Oh, maybe not. Maybe he won't finish it. Forgot I gave him that. Okay. Um, Paya has, oh, has his ult out. Kinda nice. 134, 2 mana value. And we will set up here by combo. And I hope Peony has enough range to get the succubus. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, we'll do it like this. Unfortunately, we can't hit the second dragon, in, but it's good enough. I will heal him, just in case. Let's 
cleanse this. Okay, some more units popped up. The guest seems quite okay here because I was kind of scared that he would try to attack the succubus um, with the back attack at all costs and you have those um, rocks there on the lava and he would drown on the next turn so I thought he would suicide himself I was kind of scared about that but he did think a little so yeah, good for him Yeah, I should have her... <coughs> sorry about that Claudia should have her ultra up any time now. Oh, and if I see correctly, it's up actually not. So we'll use the assist ultra for a nice cleanse in here. Because from what I can see, I basically everyone needs it. The mod elemental buff is nearly up, so we'll use it on the next turn. Okay, this is quite useful, especially in situations like this when the enemy has a proc that curses. Now let's try here, can we... No, we can't hit the boss. But those, those, that's some nice damage, you know. Oh, and that's... that's also some nice damage. Damn, he's strong. Combo. And an ultra ready. Okay, we're staying here. Definitely attack the boss to proc a combo attack. That actually wasn't that good. So I guess I won't attack with the witch. At least not the boss. I think I'll take care of the dragon here. Shame that it's an ice proc because it will do diminish damage to the boss, but I guess we have the water proc already. It's kinda cool thing that the ice proc hits a couple of times. We can use it to take care of that uh, meter when the unit's down or take care of some apex points. It's always a nice thing to have. Okay, so now. Uh, this should be a nice turn. We have a uh, Pyre's Ultra up, and we've we'll set up a nice combo here. And also a nice counter from her, unfortunately, but we do have to do damage to her. That's a lot of stuff happening. I'm curious how much damage will Pyre do with his ultra now that the mana bar is down. Should be a quite a nice juicy amount of damage. Okay, what can we do now? I guess that was to be expected. She's in a nice spot, so she wouldn't move. Okay, Claudia has her ultra up again. I think we will utilize the healing portion of it again. And also we have the water uh, buff up, so we definitely need to use this. Okay, 112 attack, nice. And let's heal up and cleanse.
And now let's see. Let's see what Paya can do here. Okay, that's that's actually better than I thought. It's only a thousand damage. And it bounces tank, that's that's actually ridiculous. You know, if he had a nice setup, he could actually solo this boss by himself. I have no doubts about that. Okay, yeah, 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 stop with those five people. Um, so we need to do about 400 damage still. This shouldn't be a problem, we have an ultra ready, a peony. Just need to get it off. Or maybe we won't have to. And another one. So yeah, that was... This was quite an enjoyable one. And a lot quicker than the last one. So yeah, all in all those challenges were quite fun. And a lot of experience to boot. So yeah, plenty, no, plenty of nice things from that. So is she basically the head honcho of the Deadly Winds, or are we still in for some other challenges? Didn't look like the ultimate challenge, to be honest. Oh, cool, it actually has a background story. Okay. Guess they will find a use for you, so don't worry about that. Okay, so yeah, this was a nice fight, so I guess um, we don't have anything more to do. So in the next one, I think we'll be going for the story battles. We need to push the story forward and see where it takes us next. I've been wondering why it wants to take us to the Great Fairy Forest. Didn't we do all the things that we could there? Isn't everything alright there? The war with the Fae settled and Grunholt needs to rebuild. So yeah, I guess we'll see that in the next episode. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care everyone. Bye bye.